Hello and welcome to a step-by-step -step guide on how to run Endless on Grand Summoner. I'll be doing these runs as Grand Summoner Ariga, but you can do them fine as base Grand Summoner. To start things off, we'll begin with Cataphract for some bonus defensive stats, as well as Ward Regen and the ability to cast the Wall Spells. We cast the Divine Bastion for the 100% Absorption, buff ourselves with the Elemental Resistance Walls, and start working our way up to 400 or so Ward turns. Then we swap to Venefactor and swap loadout to maximize our summon stats. This means our gazers will be as strong as we can possibly make them. Our objective here is to summon four gazers. The last slot is reserved for a very scary skeleton. To summon gazers, we need to gamble. Grand Summon can give us any off and up to five different summons. We only want the gazers though. This means we must kill off any of the other ones. Unfortunately, two of the possible summons, the dragons, have more HP than the gazers, meaning we can't reliably Charon pack them away. Instead, we need to rely on the Russian roulette that is Sacrificial Pact, which just randomly kills a summon. The gazers are the go-to choice for many reasons. They are immune to physical damage, which massively boosts their survivability, notably against fallen realm shifters. They deal damage of all four basic elements with spells that can crit and penetrate very well, meaning they are well suited to tackle on the very deep floors of Endless. They can sustain themselves and deal elementless damage with Drain, which is a very important tool to kill off mighty mimics. Finally, they only have one non-damaging move, Mind Blast, which you can work around. More on that later. Additionally, they go very well with Ariga since a smarter AI tends to avoid using resistant and immune spells against foes, so it will always use the drain against the mighty mimic. Well, that was relatively fast. I was pretty fortunate with the dragon spawns. Don't forget to always leave room for one skeleton, as a resistance double down effect from Wallop is very important. Next up is Charmer. While we won't be using its skills just yet, the plus 30% mana is nice to have and it's definitely better than the negative defensive stats the Benefactor was previously providing. We go in, use a Fion stance, use Jin's talent, and then flip. We then swap to the spreading loadout. With this loadout and with Ophion stance still enabled, we have a decent chance of our buffs being given to at least one gazer. You might notice we didn't use Jin's Talon here, but earlier instead. This is because if the Fomorian Mage gear spreads Jin's Talon, the Gazers will also gain the defensive double down debuffs, which makes them much easier to kill. Golem's Fortitude spreading is pretty nice, as it saves us some turns, but it is not necessary. The Charm of Sonatas can cover for any missing basic buffs later. What is necessary, however, is the crit from Wormsong. We're going to be staying here casting it until it spreads to all the gazers. It is important to note that you can also use this method to guarantee spreading any or all of the three berserk buffs. I don't do it because I dislike playing with the damage over time effect. However, if you don't mind dealing with it and can play around it, the berserks can increase your depth by quite a bit. With the Charmer Sonatas, we can guarantee all of the relevant double up buffs, magic, defense, and resistance. Each of those buffs has an application rate of 20%. This means you can expect an average of five turns per gazer per buff. This is why spreading the Jin's talent and Golem's fortitude buffs earlier can save us some time.
While we have the Ophion stance, we can equip an alignment book to get the chance of spreading it to your gazes. We'll be using Dragon's alignment to render us immune to Nidog, one of the scariest encounters. To get the Dragon alignment on the last gazer without risking ruining the other gazer's alignments in the process, we need to swap out to Ophion's banner again. We then turn off the stance and swap back out to grab a different alignment book. In this case, I chose Arcane. We then change our alignment to Arcane and swap back out to Ophion's banner. We then change the stance back on and then flee one more time to go grab the Dragon Alignment book again. We do this back and forth dance as many times as we need in order to get Dragon Alignment on all of the gazers. This is usually the longest part of the buffing setup as it is very luck reliant. Fortunately, we got three out of four gazers on our very first attempt at spreading it, which speeds up the phase by quite a bit. After the alignments, we are done with Ophion Stance, so we can go ahead and change to Cataphract and cast their Aegis Stance. While optimally, we'd rather just not get hit in the first place, Aegis Stance at least helps us out a little bit in case we get hit by not normally menacing foes. Foreshadowing. As the last step, we cast Prism, Dark and Holy Wall on our gazers. With this, they are now immune to physical and dragon as well as resistance to fire, water, lightning, earth, holy and dark. They only take normal damage from elementless and arcane damage. And with that, we are done with the setting up. Let's actually run this dungeon. I run with Orn boosting gear since I am max leveled and already have the floor 400 achievement, however you can feel free to use experience gear for levels or tanky gear for the 400th floor. To start things off, we put the most relevant skills on the quick bar, stun dart and sleep dart. This is just for convenience. Then for the most part, we will just spam out will. This is for three reasons. One, it helps gazers penetrate better, which is fairly important for dealing with high resistance enemies. Two, gazers like to use mind blast. However, if the target already has a single down debuff, the gazers will never use mind blast. As such, using outwill prevents the gazers from using their only non-damaging move. Three, just spamming one button makes going down the floors much faster, which is important if the goal is to get horns fast. If you are not using a Riga and are instead using base grand summoner, the gazers are less prone to using mind blast, so you can afford to use other moves to spam in combat, such as stun dart. I'll slow down notably big earnings from Zerk Fallen bosses.
our skeleton dies, we need to resummon it as fast as we can. If our enemies ever get a turn to move, we're already in a dangerous position. The skeleton's resistance double down debuff helps ensure that the enemies won't get a third turn, at least not until much later into the run. Also, thank you, Aegir Stance. Thanks again, Aegir. Here, our gazer gets toxic. This is pretty unfortunate, as they will now be taking damage over time and skipping turns, and there's nothing we can do about it. Thanks again, Aegir. At around floor 350, I start paying a bit more attention. The earnings are high, but the dangers are high as well, and it becomes more and more worthwhile to start combat off with a stun or sleep dart. Healing our gazers is very important, but it is also very risky. We need to find a floor where we are certain the enemy will either die turn one or is otherwise incapable of dealing damage to us in one turn. We are not wearing our protect chance weapon in this loadout, which leaves us very vulnerable. We also lose HP by using life pact. Those are the big risks of swapping to the healing loadout. We swap to Grand Summoner Hydrus for the Pact Boosting Passive and lose the Pact Malice that comes with the Grand Summoner Auriga. If you are running the Endless as base Grand Summoner, you can simply swap loadout instead of swapping class. Make sure to equip Health Boosting and Pact Boosting gear to output as much healing as possible. Again, we found another opportunity to heal, as before we had to wait for an easy floor, which in this case was the Hattie. I'm sure you understand how to heal now, so I'll just speed through the future healing floors.
If you found this guide to be informative, make sure to leave a comment and let me know. And while you're down there, let me know what else you'd like to see from me. And that, my friends, is how my story ends. I earned a total of 70 million orns and 100 billion experience. Thank you so much for watching.